everybody. Welcome back to NCT's Debate Club, where we are answering the questions you didn't ask. Today we're asked, we're we're talking about boy bands. If you missed round one, make sure you go back and watch it so that you can see everyone make their initial plea for their boy band that they love. I am your host, impartial, unbiased Trisha. Just call me that. It's fine. It's what all my friends know me. <laughs> now. Let's get down to round two, where we are going to be talking about what makes a boy band a boy band. It's not just men in a band, right? There's more layers to it that we need to get into and understand. So we're, I'm just going to ask questions, and these guys are just going to answer it as it pertains to their boy band. So first off, I just want to say, um, who has the strongest singing voice in your band? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, yes, hi, Heather representing NSYNC. Um, I would like to uh, nominate uh, Justin Timberlake as the strongest singing voice because not only was he a highlight during his time at NSYNC, but since then he's really been a breakout star and had several albums and he's been on SNL and you can't get to be a better singer unless you're on SNL, so. Yeah. Or if you're JC. Okay, yeah, uh, Chrissy? Okay, so I just want to like uh, uh, piggyback on what Heather said and just like there wouldn't be a Justin Timberlake if there wasn't a Jordan Knight, okay? He made singing in a high falsetto cool for possibly the first time ever, right? And he wasn't even uh, the strongest singer in the band. I think that's, that's a Joey McIntyre hands down, that sweet like buttery baby voice. Okay, well, everybody has something to say, so I'm going to let you all answer this question. Kevin, go ahead. Well, since we're talking about who came first, I think we should mention that uh, a member of my band preceded all the others, Mr. Michael Jackson, the king of pop, ladies and gentlemen. I know his reputation now is a little controversial, but I think we can all agree he made some good music in his day and he had a beautiful singing voice that continues to inspire the world. It's true. Nate? And listen, here's what I'm gonna say. These are, these are boy bands, right? Which means the whole band has gotta be good at singing. You can't have one shining star. How about four part harmonies? How about acapella singing? That's what Boys to Men brings to the table every <laughs> single day, every single night. Till 2020, you talk about people are still around, Boys to men still around, still making music. New kids on the block are still around as well. That's true. Justin, and boys like to men how many around. how many Grammys does New Kids have? Boys to men is down to three members, though. I want to point they that are, out. But it they is lost one. All right, let's move on. Um, yeah, next we're gonna talk. Um, so first we had about vocal prowess. Next, I want to talk about um, as the kids say, bops. What is the boppiest bop that your boy band made? So I got to just jump in and say, like, you know that you've made it when Weird Al does a parody of your song, right? And uh, the right stuff is every bit as good as the white stuff in the middle of an Oreo, right? And I think everybody knows step by step. Come on, hanging tough. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, pick That's one. Pick one. No, all of them. <laughs> all of them, Trisha. I missed, yeah, the, the one I said first. Right stuff. Yeah, neat. Uh, Boys to Men didn't just make bops. They had their own style with their, with, uh, with, uh, sorry, they had their own style. Cool high harmony brought, coolly high harmony brought in hip hop doo wop as a style. Okay. And, and you don't, you, you get hip hop doo wop, not just bops. But since we're talking about just, you know, I don't want to call them bangers, but, you know, if we're talking about straight up hits. I'll make love to you. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Ooh, interesting choice. I always think of a bop as a fast song that you dance to. Yeah, well, you dance to or after, Trisha. That's all that <laughs> happens. That's how that happens during that song. All right, we're moving on. Um, next, I would like you uh, to point to an example of your band's cultural relevance. What's something that has they have done that has led to more things being done in that vein? What have they done that really had their finger on what's happening? Yeah, Nate. <clears throat> well, all I got to say is this. 
when baby Nikki needed christening on December 20th, 1993, who was there? Boys to Men came to through on Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and and they got that, and they got baby Nikki christened right before Christmas. Okay, one of the best episodes of that show of all time. Okay, when Titus in Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt needed to make a, up a song and sing a song on a, at a funeral on the spot, who did he turn to? Boys to Men. That's right. That's right. All I'm saying is culturally over and over again, I think over 54 soundtracks that are on in different movies, they're in it. They're in the culture. All right. Okay, hold on. We got to move on. We're almost to six minutes. Um, all right, Kevin, you were next up. We'll let you answer that question and then we're moving on. Okay, real quick. I want to say that the Jackson 5 were pioneers when it came to branding, okay? They knew how to merchandise. They knew how to put their faces on lunchboxes, on coloring books, on everything in the 70s. And what I loved most about their branding strategy was their Saturday morning cartoon, which a lot of people don't remember, but it was an important step in bridging that gap between television and the music industry. And it opened the doors for more artists to think how they can spread their image in all these different sectors and entertainment. Okay, thank you, Kevin. That actually brings me to my next question. Um, what was a exciting or bizarre of merchandise that your band put their name on or their face? Did you say Perfect. merchandise? Yes. I had a New Kids on the Block fanny pack in every color that it came in. And it came in just a variety of colors. It was the 90s. So each piece of the fanny pack was a different color, but it came in three different varieties. So I had all of the varieties and I had to like, of course, display the fact that I had all three. So I wear all three at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Later, we're going to talk about where those fanny packs are now. Uh, Heather. Yeah, um, I just am going to make this quick. Um, Trisha, if you could just look down at your shirt and then, yeah. Oh, this? Yeah, oh. that's, I mean, that's, my, they all that's had the point. T shirts. They all had no. t shirts. No. I had a I had a JC Beanie baby, if that helps you out any. Um, all right, moving on. Who's got the cutest guy? Christy. <laughs> okay, so not only uh is the very cutest of the new kids on the block, of course, uh Joey McIntyre, but choosing your the cutest of all of those cute, cute boys like showed you who you were, right? Are you a Jordan? night or are you a joey or are you wrong or are you somehow like i like jonathan and just setting you up to make bad choices later in life joey is the cutest jordan's the second cutest that tracks um all right heather um in my opening statement in the previous video that if you haven't watched now you should go back and watch i did mention that they're all attractive unlike um, some other groups, I would like to specifically point out Backstreet Boys, and they had some, mm, mm, I wasn't into it. Look, I, I can be what I'm into and what I'm not, and that's not for me. <laughs> They're not even in this debate, and you're dragging them. All right, finally, all of you at once, if you can, I would like to see an example of iconic choreography from them as you're seated, seated um, just like show me what you got. What made everybody all at once? I don't know what Kevin's doing. Oh, he's getting up. It's he's turning. Oh, he's turning around. He's doing a pirouette um, as he's seated. Okay. Thank you guys very much. Most of the music videos are them looking at. That was camera. beautiful. Um, that's the end of round two. It went a little bit longer, but we'll see what happens there. Um, before we go, I want to give out my honorable mention of the day. Um, it's this band called Youngstown that I'm almost certain only my sister and I are the people that remember that they existed. This is for her. Um, they did the theme song to, to live action Inspector Gadget. Um, and on the back of With all Matthew of these Matthew Broderick? Books, yes. <laughs> they did it. Do, 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 do. Okay. Um, did you so, cut these out of magazines that you already had around your house? Um, <laughs> we'll get into that another time. Um, okay. <laughs> Make sure that you are subscribed, you like the video, you have the notification on. Make sure you check out our website to see how you can 
attend one of our live improv shows coming up soon. It's all on Zoom. You don't even have to put on pants. Um, thank you very much. And we will see you next time for round three.